talking about change. So, change is not something to fear, but it's an opportunity to grow closer to God and to become more like the person that God has designed you to be. Not the person that you think you want to be, but the person that God has predestined and designed you to be. And I wrote and did some little commentary on some Bible verses, um, and I hope that it can change your stability, your hope, and remind us that sometimes, no matter how difficult the circumstance is in your life, that it can shift because of God's grace and mercy and His love for us. And not only can it shift, this is what I know about God. If God knows your heart is good, He can make that prosperity and that shift in your heart literally that quick. See, God doesn't have to have permission from somebody to uh, make life-changing and life-altering choices within our lives. He's capable himself, amen? And so I wrote these about God's love and his promises and how steadfast and how unchanging God is, but also how changing we need to be at times, amen? So we'll go into the first one in Scripture, Romans 12, 2. It says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, and then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, the part of that scripture that I really like is the end of it. Because it says, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. It doesn't say, God's good and pleasing, and I'll work with you on what you want. Just work with me a little bit. It says, put you aside, and let's worry about what my will is for your life. Put yourself to the side and concentrate on what God has in store for you because it says his good and pleasing and perfect. It doesn't say imperfect. It doesn't say you might like it. It doesn't say you could like it. It said it's good, pleasing, and perfect for God. So I always say this to everybody that asks me, and it's something I've been doing for a long time because I'm old. Um, you know, 40 crept up on me quick. <laughs> Vicki looks at me and she watches my nose and she goes, what are you insinuating? <laughs> so this verse is about embracing change. But it's not just about in cha changing and outwardly change. It's about embracing and changing from the inside out. If once we can get our hearts and our minds to think on the same level, what a great, greater person you would be, what a greater world this would be, and how better we would be as somebody to go out and actually talk about God, talk about His good and pleasing will, talk about what God can do in an instant. Because remember, God can do it in an instant. Remember, too, God doesn't have anybody higher than him to get authority from to change somebody's lives. He can just do it. Amen? It's about, it, it's a call to break free from worldly influences and renew our minds with God's wisdom. Here's the hard part. You have to get rid of worldly influences. I said Friday night, and I'll say this again, this is how influential this world is. Beyonce has a country song out. She's calling it country because the word Texas, hold them, and ain't draw or something's in it. I have a newsflash for you people. That's still not country music. If it ain't about an ex-wife, a dog, an old pickup truck, <laughs> And rolling down a back road, that, that, that's country music. But when you're talking about, well, this ain't Texas, well, you ain't country, but the influence, man, I sang it better than her. The, <clears throat> and I can't sing country either. We're talking about the influence from the outside world, right? So they start complaining. 
and got this movement going on that country radio has to play this song. So it went, it, it's hit Billboard, I think number one now. Stuff like that makes me want to puke. Because we, as a society, are influencing things just because. When we stop trying to influence what the world is doing around us negatively, and, and we stop with all this junk that's going around, well, I want to be popular, so I'm going to get on the bandwagon with that. I'm on the God train. I'm on the God chuck wagon. I'm going to the God rodeo in the sky, and I'm going to ride a bronc, bronc and I'm not going to break a bone, so how about that? Because if I did it here, I'd break my neck. 2 Corinthians 5.17, about new creation. <clears throat> now, I've said this scripture a lot up here. <clears throat> it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone, the new is here. Talk about a spiritual makeover. That's like looking in the mirror, <laughs> all you women that do this anyways, most of you, not all of you, and just keep caking it on because you don't like what you look like. And you'll keep caking it on until you can get the appearance that you want. That's what people do with their lives. They keep caking stuff on them about how to change, how to change, how to change. Vicky's at it again. Why are you poking her for? Because I color my beard? What makes you think I color my beard? You're not in my bathroom. And this has nothing to do about that. This is about your personality. <laughs> and this is almost all natural. <laughs> but, but I will say this. It's my, own, it, it's my own hair, at least. Take off Charlie's hat. Uh-huh. Look at that. Flowing locks. And it's mine. So, folks, this is church. <laughs> this is church. Um, take a spiritual makeover. This verse celebrates the incredible transformation that happens when you're in Christ. <clears throat> Old things gone. New things here. New things stay. Old things goes onto a back burner to never be dwelled on again. Because you love the new that God gave you now, that you don't have to look back. I say this all the time, and I'll say this until the day I die. Don't worry about what other people think of you. They're not paying your bills, sleeping in your bed, cooking you dinner. Sorry. Um, I said the bad word to Linda. Cook? They're not doing those things ever in your life. So why are you letting them decide how you live your life? Are you going to let these people decide if you go to heaven or hell? Because if you're so influenced by them, by their actions and their words to you, are you truly a Christian? Are you truly a follower of Jesus Christ? Have you really truly accepted what that cross really means? The answer to that is unequivocally, no, you're not. You've got work to do. You've got to look inside of your own heart. You've got to look inside of your old soul and say, 2 Corinthians 5.17, I live by you today. Starting today, my verse is 2 Corinthians 5.17 because I am new today. That guy, that girl back there died. I'm the new creature. I'm the new creation. I am born today with Christ, and I'm going to keep it that way. This is my life. I'm going to live it, but I'm going to live it and carry the shield and the sword of my Lord still on the throne, Jesus Christ and our God. Amen. Philippians 4.13, strength in change. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Now, change can be tough. A lot of people don't like change. You know, there's people that go out into the woods and live in a cabin just because they want to be left the heck alone. And they'll stay there their whole lives. Never marry, never have children, but they're there because they don't want anything to ever change in their lives. 
They just want it that way. I know a guy, ooh, how old is he? He's about six or seven years older than me, so he's 35 or 36. <laughs> For about 40 years, still to this day, he has never turned on a television set in his house because he doesn't own one. He's never turned on a radio in his house because he doesn't own one. And I asked him why, and he said, why do I want to ruin a good day by turning something on that's going to bring me down? So he plays with ham radios just so he can talk to people all over the world. That's his entertainment. But his philosophy is, I'm not going to let something bring me down that somebody else is saying or doing, so I'm just going to eliminate that out of my life. I'm not telling you not to watch TV. You should watch TV. Aim Christian television because we're on it. <coughs> but he's not going to be influenced by the outside world. And I'm asking you guys today, make a, a effort today not to let anybody or anything influence your journey to the kingdom of God. Don't let anybody or anything influence your life that's going to prevent you from going up there and hearing these magical words. Anybody know what the magical words are? Welcome, my good and faithful servant. Well done. Come on in. That's what we thrive for, right? That's what we strive for. That's why we're here. That's why you're here on Sunday. That's why you do and we do what we do. That's why I do and we... Yes. So that we can enter that gate one day and meet the people that we knew before that were blessed enough to make it. Meet the loved ones that we had before that were blessed enough to make it. It's not hard. It's honestly, it's not hard. When you put your ego to the door, you put your narcissistic ways, you realize that what you have and who you have in your life are enough. You realize that God put people in your life for a reason. And go back to the first verse I had. Good, perfect, God's will. If you're here with somebody right now today, or you're leaving with somebody today, think of it like this. God made this happen. Now we're going to make it work. You understand? God made it happen. We're going to make it work. Because there's no relationship that is ever going to succeed without three people involved. Man, woman, God. Let me repeat that. Man, M-A-N, woman, and God. That relationship will flourish, will prosper. You'll have little children. How many of you guys are going to have? Seven, eight? He's, he goes, if she's moody already, just wait. Yeah. Ooh, boy, you're in for it. Yeah. Let's all pray. <laughs> Give him the strength and, and the courage that he... Is she anything like you? Say two prayers. <laughs> Ephesians 4.22-24. to 24, Putting on a new self. <clears throat> With regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self and to put on the new self, created to be like God, to be true righteousness and holiness. Now, this verse is like a spiritual wardrobe change. It encourages us to shed our old ways and embrace a life that reflects God's goodness. Fashionable, faithful, goodness, omnipotent, always on time, always willing to help and let us prosper. But see, we have to go to God, and we have to lay down and just say, God, man, I've tried this forever. I'm always falling short of what I want for my life. I'm always falling short of the things that I want in my life. I always feel inadequate about the way my life is going. I'm always making the same mistake, whether it's drugs, alcohol, relationships, ability to do any, the ability to actually listen and follow God. God is telling you, lay that down at my feet. 
If you lay it at my feet, this is the promise that I'm going to make you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be your rock. I will be your God. You will be my people, and I will flourish you and prosper you beyond anything imaginable in your little brain. I will make you massive to the people around you. I will flourish you that much, but it comes at a cost. The cost is, I gave Moses a set of laws that I want you to abide by. I've written things in this book called the Holy Book and called the Good Book for a reason, because it's holy and it's good. All I'm asking you is, abide by that book. You abide by that book. Never take my son for granted. Get to the cross. Repent your sins. Be baptized. And, I, and listen to me. And I will show you a life that you can't even dream that big. Who's willing to accept that life today? Who's willing to accept that life today? I just gave you the guidelines how to get it. Now, are you willing to put self down and put God up? Are you willing to self-sacrifice? Are you willing to lose the anger and the resentment towards people? Are you willing to be the best you that God will let you be? Again, God's will, God will let. Are you willing to let God? If you let God today, when you walk out of this building, you're new, just like 2 Corinthians 5.17 says just like Ephesians 4, 22, 24 says. You're renewed. Your spirit's renewed. Your life is renewed. Your relationships are renewed. The joy that you've never truly experienced in your life, you will experience a joy that you have never thought humanly possible because people have always beat you down. People try to tell you who you are. But see, other people don't know you. They don't know what's in your heart. They don't know the kindness in your soul. They just know what people say. They know by past actions who they think that you are. But see, God reads the heart. God knows who you are. God will make that adjustment in your life. All you got to do is sacrifice self and give it to God and watch a new creation born and then watch that creation flourish and then watch everyone around you go, He's got some. She's got some. I want some. Where can I get it? Promo plug from the Cowboy Church. That's where you get it. Because we serve God. And we do it right. (laughs) Proverbs 3.5 Trust in God through changes. Trust in God with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. All right, peoples, in the midst of change, this verse is a nudge to lean us towards God's understanding, not just our own, because I want to make this perfectly clear. You may have a GPS system in your car. You may have that GPS system on your phone. You may think in your brain that you've got the GPS system for your life. But I'm going to tell you a fact, Jack. God made the roadmap of your life. That GPS system ain't worth a darn if you're not going to go through God's roadmap to get you to where He wants you, and that's the glory, amen? God's GPS is the only thing you have to worry about. How do you take the road to God through your GPS? It starts at John 3.16. It goes to Luke Bypass, then it goes to Mark Boulevard, and then it goes on the Luke Express, and then it takes you straight to glory. Jeremiah 29, 11, plans for hope and a future. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope of a future. See, whenever I read this, it's like getting a hug from God. It's like God coming down and giving you the fist pump and the good high five and saying, ha ha, gotcha, gotcha. It reassures us that he has amazing plans for us. Even in times of change, God has amazing plans for us. But again, we have to look at God's blueprint that he's already printed out in heaven for us. And he's making these check marks. They did it. Not yet. Not yet. 
man, not yet, not yet, not yet. Not. God's waiting for this side of your little check marks to be all they did it, they did it, they did it. But we're over here going, flesh, booze, drugs, women, lust, adultery, my way, narcissism, ego, non-humility. Um, we're, we're over there checking this side, and God's going, he's just sitting up there, you know, he probably looks like some Adonis guy. He's sitting up there going, first thing he's saying is, I've got more hair than Charlie. Um, the next thing he's saying, he's like, how hard is it for those people down on earth to realize that the check marks on this side are making them miserable? They think that they're okay for a night. Then they wake up on Saturday morning regretting Friday night, or they wake up Sunday morning regretting Saturday night. When are they going to realize that if they start checking this box, God's will, God's will, God's will, God's will, their life explodes into something they can't even imagine because of the beauty of it. Their life explodes, and, and we get reassured of God's promises to never leave us, never forsake us, and let us be the best that we can be because he's got us. Why don't we today take these check marks, get that eraser. They still make those pencils with erasers. Take those here. Take your iPad with the little thing on it. Take those check marks on the right off. Put those check marks to the left, and that's God's side. God's side that says his will, his will, his will, done. Watch your life change. I'm back. Watch your life change for the best. Watch God make that. You know, I've always said people will go, man, I got I to gotta change my life. I'm going to start over. I'm going to do this. This is how you start over. You do this. See, I, I'm making a U-turn in my life. And I'm stopping here. Because if I continue, I've just made a cir full circle back to my old life. you got to take that horseshoe you turn and keep it there. You cannot continue to walk into that circle that leads you back exactly where you were here, where you're sitting and you're praying to your porcelain God because you drank too much Friday or Saturday. You're praying for that thing to say negative because you made a mistake one weekend. You're praying that everything in your life would change, but you don't seem to completely understand change in your life happens like this. That is change in your life. When you can humble yourself to the cross, when you can absolutely, positively say without a shadow of a doubt that God, no matter what road, no matter what journey, no matter what path, no matter how much pain, no matter how much agony, no matter how much testing, trials, and tribulations, God, my God, my God, I am not going to get off this course. I'm going to stay on the course. I'm going to ride that horse until it dies because God wants it that way. So I'm going to do everything that I can do to make sure I stay on that road to God, that I stay on there and I get to the pearly gates, that I walk that streets of gold. And God himself tells me, come on in, boy. You did it. That's what I wanted. You're here. Thank you. Then I could go get Jesus and I go preach in a corner somewhere. <laughs> Psalms 35. Is everybody anybody else in here hot or is it just me running? <laughs> here, Tracy. <you're> right here. <laughs> I'll show you something, Charlie, you haven't seen in a while. Sweaty hair. <laughs> Psalms 35. She looked at him. <laughs> Joy comes after sorrow. Weeping may start stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Change. See, inevitably, No, that only happens when somebody digs me three in a row. I'm on silent. Um, 
Change can bring tough times. This verse promises joy is coming. Change, welcome. Change is scary. To some people, God is scary. They think he, he's some big, gray-haired, gray-beard, big blob up in the sky that gets a kick out of our misery. That's the furthest from the truth. God weeps over our misery. But make no mistake about this. Somebody one time said, it was Charles Templeton, who was uh, one of the, believe it or not, when Charles Templeton met Billy Graham, um, Charles Templeton was bigger than Billy Graham at the time. Charles Templeton had a big church in Canada. And Charles Templeton left the church after a while, toured with Billy Graham, and, and he said, I can no longer serve a God that allows, this is world war, that allows all this killing of innocent women and children. I can't follow a God anymore that allowed six million Jews to be killed by gas. I can't follow a God anymore that is letting this world war start again. Billy Graham looked at Charles Templeton and he said something that is just rings to my head from the first day I saw it until now. He looked at Charles and he said, Charles, God didn't do that. Man did. Stop blaming everything on God. God gave us free will. Some people use it right. Most people use it wrong. But God gave it to us so that we can make our own choices. But make no mistake about it. If you come back to God, now I sound like I'm down south. If you come back to God, if you come back to His Son, if you come back to that cross, if you let the blood that ran down Calvary mean something to you, if you live by the stripes that were put on the Lamb, if you will change your life and only deal with God, your life changes now. It doesn't change in 10 minutes. It changes now. But we're so full of ourselves, thinking that we have God's way. You only have God's way when you see things happen positively in your life. Then you know you're on the same channel of G-O-D. I'm going to W-G-O-D, clicking that radio on, and I'm never leaving that station. Amen? Hmm. It's Ecclesiastics 3.1, a time for everything. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. This verse gives a poetic nod to the seasons of life. It's a reminder that every moment, every change has a purpose. If God is changing your life today, if God is, um, man, if God is, is putting you in a position right now that he's elevating you, it's because you've deserved it. Then people say, why does that guy up there have all this money and every time he helps somebody, everybody, he has to tell everybody he did it and he hardly ever helps anybody, but he's got all this money. Why did God give him the money? He's got the life I want. Sooner or later, God's gonna take it. You don't know that that guy's not in misery when he shuts the door every night and you probably, if you're a Christian, aren't ever gonna meet him again. Who has the better life? If God builds you to where you can benefit and help people, spread it. Spread God's knowledge to everyone. God has a special place in heaven for those people. He just does. Hebrews 13 eight. Jesus. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In a world of change, this verse is a comforting reminder that Jesus is our constant. No matter what changes around us, Jesus still loves us. He's still our companion. He's still the guy that sacrificed it all. Stop making this mean nothing. Who in here has children? Raise your hand. Honest answer, no lies. Who would give up their son to be nailed on there and be mocked right now? Who would? No hands came up, but almost the whole church, which is almost full today, everybody's hands came up. Think about what God did for us. See, 
Jesus didn't just die for you. He died for you. He died for you, Mitch. He died for you, Eddie. He died for the Monahans. He died for Joni and Bernie. He, he died for the Chinos and the Paines. He died for everybody. Why can't we take this serious? That he did something that this church itself, this congregation, and it's, it's just now admitted you're not willing to do. But he did. So that you don't have to. You understand that? And until you take the cross personal, do you really think you're going to prosper to the top of your ability? Do you really think that God's got you on the A list? That you're going to get the five-star dinner with the supper of the Lamb? Or are you going to go get burnt toast? It's your choice. And folks, it really is your choice. Hebrews 13.8. No, Isaiah 43.19. New things. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am away, making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I absolutely love this scripture. It's a beautiful reminder that God is always working on something new in our lives, even if we can't see it yet. If your will is a good, pleasing will to God, if your heart is in the same mindset as your mind, if your soul is screaming for change, and you see little dabbles of prosperity coming to you, but then you're like, well, I don't see anything else. It's because God's preparing it all for you. It's because he's waiting to go, you ready? Are you ready? Because now what I got in store for you is better than I've even said. Now what I've got in store for you is something beyond any comprehension that you could ever think of. Now what I have in store for you and your family is greater than any dream that you could ever have. This is going to be something that people will look at you and go, man, that sounds like a book of fiction. And God's going to like say to them, no, this is called the book of faith. This is called the book of doing my will. This is called the book of hard times that turned in to God's reward. Amen. And God is singling everybody out, waiting to be able to do that. God has chosen his people. God has chosen his people. Are you ready? On the count of three, if God was here, he would say, See ya later.